Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And this is the man of the hour, Leo Rush. It was all over BostonWrestling.com and our social media. But Leo, brother, they got to check out some of this merch. They got to. Check it out, fans, right now available on eBay. You can add this to your collection. Support Wrestling Insiders and keep wrestling legends working on eBay. Get this WWE NXT TakeOver War Games 2020 11 by 14 limited edition autograph poster signed by everyone on the event, number 23 of only 100 made. Include signatures from the Undisputed Era, Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest, Tommaso Ciampa, Timothy Thatcher, Io Shirai, Tony Storm, Rhea Ripley, Dexter, Loomis, and more. Comes with authentication hologram on the back of the poster. Also comes with mystery autographed 8x10 and an on-air shout-out from WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas, on Wrestling Insiders at your house. Get it now. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year of unknown with professional wrestling content galore, and we need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after we review the previous night's Monday Night Raw, it's Wrestling Insiders at your house with the unpredictable WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights after WWE, NXT, and AEW at 10 p.m., you never know who's going to show up on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred, Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey Through the 80s and 90s on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday nights after the lights go down at the Thunderdome on SmackDown, it's John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. If you want early, ad-free access to all of our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and to help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times, for less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021. Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, welcome to another installment of Wrestling Insider Current Events, where we kick back, relax, and review the March 31st, 2021 editions of WWE NXT and AEW Dynamite. I am joined by my partner in crime, Dave Carter, as we are literally now just days away from a first in our nearly 20 years of existence, Wrestle House in Tampa, Florida. WrestleMania week, a wide variety of guests, wrestling insider interviews, live episodes, cyber autograph signings, and so much more. The amount of work I have to do to have next week and the week after this video content done is unbelievable. I am a miserable, angry person on top of everything else that has been going on in the world of Boston wrestling over the past couple of weeks. But you can help make it better, folks, by giving this video a big thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Don't forget, the eBay store is open 24-7 with the link in the description box below. In the Patreon family, it is a-growing at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling, our Patreons today, Dave, get an exclusive video um, from the Coliseum video release, WWF Super Tape 2, uh, Marty Jannetty does a watch-along with the Rockers two matches on there against the Powers of Pain from Madison Square Garden and the new Dream Team from a television taping I am not 100% sure of. Again, that is exclusive to the Patreons. Along with at the top of the hour tonight, 10 p.m., Marty Jannetty is back for a brand new wrestling inside his party with Marty is Marty's no-holds-barred sex, drugs, and rock and roll look at the world of professional wrestling continues but as i like to say as i need someone to carry me bad tonight i'm like a, a, a tag team wrestler with a broken leg i need my partner i pass the baton to you which show are we going to break down first we'll do nxt first all right from the capital wrestling center in orlando florida just days away from the two-day takeover event let's go let's rock what did let's, we got let's rock on this opening day Thursday, we are reviewing for some teams. NXT. My game, my team. Your team, the Tigers. They're, they're going to win too, which is awesome. Three nothing right now on the top of the ninth. 
Good for you. Yes, sir. All right. So NXT, we kicked it off with the video package of uh, Finn Balor and Cross. Basically, what's going to lead up to their takeover match. Um, just a quick little package. And then we got a match right off the bat. We had Roderick Strong versus Cameron Grimes. Um, Grimes on the mic, walking down to the ring. Has a t-shirt, trying to persuade Strong about new business ventures, pretty much. Strong isn't having any of it. Attacks Grimes on the top of the ramp. Match finally starts when they get in the ring. Strong really getting a lot of offense in on Grimes early. Um, Grimes ends up uh, getting some offense in, throws Strong into the barricade. Um, That was a good shot. I thought, you know, it was going to turn the tables, but then it went back and forth a little bit. Strong sees the Undisputed Era armband that um, Grimes throws at him. And he loses, like, you know, it's like, it was just funny because it's like, oh, my God. He gets, like, distracted from it because he's looking at it and just, you know, couldn't, couldn't believe, believe it. believe his whatever. eyes. Yeah, couldn't, you know, was felt like he was seeing a ghost almost, as you would say. Uh, Grimes gets the upper hand, ends up pinning strong. So, basically, he got the match by winning with an armband. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was kind it was, of funny. It was a good one. Match was Match was all right. I had nothing wrong with it. I know you're not a big fan of Cameron Grimes. He makes me laugh. Other than that, I don't know. I thought the match was all right. I think Roderick Strong is superb. This was just a complete nut of waste of time, especially with what they were offering on the other channel. (laughs) I love it. Uh, From there, we're carrying cross video package, you know, just talking about what he's going to do to Finn Balor at TakeOver and how he's training and all that. Then we go to commercial. Tomasa and Walter video package when we get back of their match happening at TakeOver as well. How, you know, just going back and forth, how bad Tomasa needs it, all this stuff. Uh, so back to back video package, which is kind of weird, but I guess because they're building up to their big show next Wednesday and uh, Thursday, right? Yeah, Wednesday. You Thursday. got it. That's it. Um, anything to say about those two things? or Yeah, they're just more video packages. You know, I, I'm familiar with the matches. I didn't really need them. But for those that don't watch it every week, I, I'm sure they enjoyed them. Yes, sir. Uh, from there, Santos Escobar is on the mic. He was um, th- he was the best champion of cru- for the Cruiserweights. He's the king of the Lucha Libres, he says. The division belongs to him because it's, it's, in, it's in his blood. Blood and tradition says he's the best Cruiserweight in NXT history. Tyler Breeze comes up to answer the open challenge that he he asked in the beginning of his interview, said that he's going to do an open challenge for the Cruiserweight. Breeze on the mic says, you're entitled. That's why you're standing there, and that's why you're in the position you are. He says, challenge accepted. So I was kind of happy about that to see Tyler Breeze out there to face uh, Santos Escobar because we were all, we were just talking about him last week, how we would love to see him get a singles run. So I was I was excited to see him getting something here. Um, well, and it started that, better than it ended. Right. Did you? All right. So you don't have, that's all you have to say about the promo. <laughs> that's all I have to say about all of it. What a waste to Tyler Breeze to be losing to some cruiserweight on NXT. But right I on. guess that's where uh, the, the fate has left him in the WWE universe right now. Yeah. Sad. Um, so we get the match. Santos Escobar versus Tyler Breeze. Uh, both guys are great. Um, Breeze is a beast, man. He looked good by himself. Like he gets hidden a lot in the uh, tag team matches because he's got to share the ring. But when he's a singles man, he, he does some good stuff. It was a great match. I said, uh, Santos Escobar ends up winning by pinfall after the match. MSK comes out and helps Tyler Breeze because, uh, Fantasio Del Legato, whatever, um, Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wilde end up attacking, trying to get attacking. So the MSK comes out. Grizzly Young Vets on the video says they're focused on being the new tag team champions. Um, quick little segment. Nothing to really write back about. I think Basically. younger fans will enjoy them. Yeah, absolutely. I like um, MSK as well. Um, then we're backstage with Gargano, Derry, Candice, and Indy. Um, he complains mm-hmm. about the match uh, that they're having and why Derry's even in it. And Derry said, Derry loves the idea. And Gargano's why? Because of what I did to you with the therapist? And he goes, no, because of the finger poke of doom. And he goes, did you know that, like, killed the business? And then, wait a minute, Gargano's like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, so you can just hit me with the finger, knock me down. I can pin you. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I love it. So more bullshit of just funny. It's a great way to describe it. Yeah, just funny hot stuff. There he looks like a million bucks, and he's just stuck with this. 
I don't like it. Childish I mean, trash. Yeah, exactly. There you go. So am, am uh, I shooting today or what? Because I'm really not in the mood. <laughs> I'm not in the mood for garbage wrestling today. I'm ready for Wrestle House. I'm ready for some great interviews. I'm ready for live episodes and cyber autograph signings with Jerry Briscoe and Zeb Coulter, Dutch Mantel, and Al Snow and JTG and others that I'm still waiting to officially announce this week. I really don't care about Cameron Grimes in the way. You know what I mean? They're in, <laughs> they're in the way of me enjoying wrestling. But anyway, continue, fine sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and then you're finally happy then because we roll into a women's match. Oh. Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell versus Gigi and Zeta. Um, I do like Zeta. She's from Booker T School. She looked like she's, you know, has some potential in her, the moveset that she did get in. She looked pretty good. Uh, it was a quick match, though, which you were probably happy about. Candice and Indy win the match. Shotzi and Ember come out and tell Candice and Indy they accept the challenge and then shoots a little, like, nerf nerf thing at him or dart or whatever it was out of the cannon i was just like dan must be loving this well uh, they were shooting something out of a nerf gun when howard miller was watching it he said he was ready to shoot something on them but it wasn't a nerf gun but again that's a a different story for a different time as well jesus um yeah the match was the what it was i know you probably don't have much to say about no, it, it sucked but that's okay i think it's so uh, before they go to commercial we get eo confronts raquel backstage they go at it a little bit, start, you know, scuffling. And this is an ongoing trend, as you'll see throughout the night. And so they start uh, shuffling. Then they go to commercial. We come back. Strong walking through the hallway and says he's done. Basically, he's done. He's not going to be in the match. I don't know if it means he quits, but he's done. Left it as that. What did you think of that? I, a I very shocked. dramatic moment. Right? I just, I don't know. To very me, dramatic know. to me, yeah. Y yeah. Um. From there, we get another women's match, which is Zoe Stark versus Raquel Gonzalez. Raquel was dominating in the beginning. I really do like her. I think her aggression fits her well. Um, Zoe comes back with some good offense, man. This this girl's got potential. She's very good. Um, Dakota Kai gets involved for a little bit, but it doesn't really affect the match because Zoe is still getting a lot of offense in, which I was happy about. Um, great neck breaker from the top rope Zoe did to Raquel, which was looked really good. Um, at the end, though, Raquel won, obviously, because she's going into the title match at uh, TakeOver. But Zoe showed up. I'm glad they didn't let her just get squashed because she looks like she has a lot of potential. What did you think of the match? Eh, for what it was, it was fine, but nothing I really wanted to see. Is that a good way to describe it? Hey, that's that's the nicest thing you probably have said in a long time about women's wrestling. So I'll take it. After the match, though, EO comes running out, and Raquel and EO stop brawling all over the ring. So there's another one of those. So we're Zanile. getting like I said, yeah, so it just it's an ongoing trend of what they keep on doing. Um, from there, we get an ad, and I didn't mention it the first time because I didn't know it was going to be anything, but it's a dog running through the building of WWE or the PC or whatever it is, and it, it's going to lead to something. But that's why I didn't say it the first time, Adam, because I mean, I thought it was just a little commercial, but it's an ongoing thing. So it did already happen once. This was the second time. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Okay, so you did see it. Um, and there we get Kushida and Pete backstage. I already hold the crown of the best wrestler in the world, he tells Kushida. Kushida says something in Chinese back, which they didn't even put no uh, any caption or anything off what it was. Well, so they needed Asuka. They had to translate, I guess. Yeah, so I don't know what he said, but that's basically what they did was confront each other. So it obviously going to lead to something. Anything to say about it? or? Eh, I, it be a great match to see compared yep. to what else was on this show that night, especially right on. Um, we get a video package of Kyle Riley and Cole few. I thought this was good stuff, man. It was done like a movie trailer. I really like this. This was awesome work by WWE. And like we always say, they do over the top production work and this was fantastic. Well, maybe they could use Cecil the lion when he's making the movie trailers for his films as they're released in 10 minute intervals. Right on. I know HBO Max is in a, interested in picking them up, but that remains to be seen. <laughs> what did you think of the video? Did you like it? It was good. Yeah, it was good. I thought so, too. Uh, from there, we got another women's match. Yeah, third was, in a row. Real treat. Yeah, I could. I, there was a lot of women's match, and just one after the other. We had Ember, Room, Ember Moon and uh, Casey Canizaro versus Zia Lee. Um, Two-on-one match. Zia Lee... Uh, Friggin' her entrance is fantastic. I I love it. I think she's fantastic. She's I see potential on her for sure. Um, 
She starts beating on both of them. Great stuff. Kaden walks up the ramp during the match, though, and I don't even know what the guy's called, but I just put crazy guy, grabs her by the throat, and then blows some smoke in her face and just makes her look like she's, like, fading away. I don't know if that he cast a spell or, like you said, Papa Shango stuff. I don't know. The Zia drama Lee. continues with Zia Lee. Yeah, I didn't mind it because if they're building to a new story, whatever. I like that. I do like that stuff. So to me, it was it, it was pretty good. Um, anything to say about it? It was just too much women's wrestling. Yeah, there was a lot of women's on this. I'm not going to disagree. Way too, a little much. too much. Yeah. Uh, Cause then right after that we get Raquel backstage to do an interview. Io and her stop brawling again. Raquel ends up throwing her through the wall though this time, and she like through the sheet. Co- but it was weird because the one window had sheet rock in it. The rest of the windows were glass. It was just it's kind of funny. But um, yeah, another one for Raquel and Io. I don't know. To me, it I guess it's just building to how much they have to feud, like how much hatred they have for each other or whatever. Anything else? No, other than there was plenty of it. Um, then we get another ad, dog running, and then at the end it shows a girl with her legs and boots. It says, we'll see you April 13th, Frankie. I'm guessing Maybe they're bringing back be- Coco Beware's bird to feud with the dog. No, I think it's no. going to be Ty Valkyrie. I think she's going to be debuting, but that's just me. I haven't read anything. If I'm totally wrong, sorry, everybody. Well, that but would just- make sense. Yeah, I think it's Ty Valkyrie. Um, from there, we're backstage with Tomasa. Um, basically he says, Tommaso, um, who the hell is that? Tommaso's Tommaso. girlfriend or no Tommaso. Oh, Tommaso. Okay. Oh, did I break up? I'm sorry. Maybe I broke That's up. That's all right. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa backstage, his wife and his baby gave him that necklace that you broke. He says, he says he has changed in so many ways. He wants to get back on the top. We'll do anything to get to do that at takeover. He's fighting for something finally again. So, you know, basically talking about how he needs to win the title, how basically he needs to be back at the top because he's been at the bottom, which I didn't even think he was at the bottom. And I, I like his promos because they're like right in your, they're in your face. They're not too loud. They're not too soft. They're like, you know, they're perfect. I like them. He has a good intensity go, about him. Yeah. Well, you like his promos? Uh, most of the time. And yeah. I thought this one was good. His look, man, Whew, he looks like, like a gremlin or something. He's getting, he's looking, well, you know. I, I don't know what that's all about. You know, most guys try and look for youth. Right. Uh, we Then we get the Finn video package about his uh, perspective on the match against Karrion Cross and what's going to happen and how he's been training and things like that. Um, these are really well done. I guess they're good to keep people posted on what's going to happen if people are just tuning in. Um, anything to say about it? Yeah, yeah, that was really good. There you go. So we <laughs> get uh, I, I just let it leave it open. I don't want to just cut you off. That's why. Uh, from there, we get uh, Isaiah Swerve Scott coming out. And as he's coming out, he gets attacked from Leon Ruff uh-huh. before that, the gauntlet match, that Royal thing they're doing. Um, and it goes to commercial. When we come back, it's L.A. Knight. I'm just going to name everybody that was in Run the ring. Run brother. L.A. Knight, uh, Grimes, Pete Dunn, Kushida, Tyler Russ. Jake Atlas, Dexter Loomis, Bronson Reed, Austin Derry. Um, Pete Dunn and some highlights was uh, Pete Dunn and Kushida eliminate each other, which we end up finding out during the match that Kushida and Pete Dunn are going to fight at uh, the take uh, takeover as well next week. Another uh, ma- match that I really look forward to seeing. They really put together some good stuff on this two night event. Absolutely. From there, we just went back and forth. Um, you know, nothing really right on. It was a normal battle royal thing. Uh, we ended up getting L.A. Knight and Dexter Loomis at the end of the Battle Royale, which I thought was pretty cool because they're both ex-Impact stars, TNA Impact stars. So I thought that was kind of cool. They didn't even use NXT guys. They, you, you could know cut the saying? tension with a knife. Yeah, I thought it was kind of cool. L.A. Knight ended up winning the Battle Royale, which I was very happy about. We'll enter last in the elimination Eliminator Gauntlet match, what will happen on night one of TakeOver. Um, L.A. Knight and Gargano end up having some words at the end of the match. Then out of nowhere, Io Shirai's music hits. She comes out and gets on the mic, speaks in Chinese. Raquel comes out. They stop rolling all over the the ring and everywhere. The women all come out from backstage, and they try to break them apart. It was just a big mess at the end. It was something AEW would do, which I didn't like. It it reminded me of what happened to AEW, I think, the week before. Mm. I didn't like that part. I love the the winner of the Battle Royale. It was good. I thought the Battle Royale was done 
pretty good for what it was. Uh, what did you think of that last whole segment? Not much. Not much. Okay. Not much at all. It was too much. Too much. Too much. Too much. <laughs> yeah, you're lost for words. You had so much fun. I just did. It, it was not a good night for professional wrestling last night. Yeah. Um, I gave NXT a six out of 10. Um, I thought that was fair with it because there were some things I liked, a lot of stuff that was just too overdone with the women's stuff. But other than that, I didn't mind the wrestling so much other than one match of it. So I gave it a six out of 10. No, I gave it a four out of 10. I, I didn't think there was much substance to it. I thought it was a lot of highlight packages and just way too much women's wrestling. The The battle Royal was fine for what it was, but it just it, overall, not much, but I tell you this, it did a lot better than my grading for the AEW show. Oh, I can't wait to hear that, but that's all I got. Um, well, I do have some, I have some news, but I don't know if it's worth talking about, uh, um, here it's more WWE stuff. So I guess we'll wait for SmackDown for that. So. Is it time sensitive news? No, it, it, I mean, other than we already talked about it, I was just going to say that NXT obviously is moving to Tuesday nights because now we're doing the NXT review. That was about all I had. And I don't know if I've thought about whether that's a good thing or, uh, a negative thing at this point. Is it good to get both shows out of the way in one whack, or is it good just to have yet another night of two-hour wrestling that sometimes can be hit, sometimes can be mit miss? More often than not, it's usually hit with NXT, but you know, I guess the NHL is more important than uh, the Capital Wrestling Center right now. Yeah, I mean, my thing is, is that for us, I guess it's good because then we don't have we get to review each individually. But also, yeah, I'm I'm thrilled. I know. <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm thrilled. I mean, I I like that because I think it's a little easier for what do you call it to watch that. But other than that, I um, I don't know. I guess it's good to now we're gonna have really wrestling every single night of the week, other than Thursday, well. I guess. Kind of well, crazy. Impact is headed there, and I know you've you've been itching for us to do that one too. That's what I'm just gonna say. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what we should do there. We'll we'll have to talk about that. We need more over. people. We need we need the fans' favorite Socko to come back. I guess to do some of these shows. Because <laughs> Sammy yeah, Pants right. and his his wide variety of socks that he likes to wear, but that remains to be seen. Uh, right and that's it for the news and notes. I guess that's all I got. All right, wrestling fans, we're going to take a brief time out. We implore you to check out the great merchandise we have in the eBay store heading into WrestleMania. The link is in the description box below where you can pick up items like this. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And this is the man of the hour, Leo Rush. It was all over bostonwrestling.com and our social media. But Leo, brother, they got to check out some of this merch. They got to. Check it out, fans, right now available on eBay. On October 28th, 2020, Wrestling's Scariest Night was back with WWE NXT Halloween Havoc. This limited edition collector's autograph poster is number 12 of only 100 produced and is signed by all nine superstars featured on the poster, including Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest, Candice LeRae, Io Shirai, Dexter Loomis, Cameron Grimes, Rhea Ripley, Raquel Gonzalez, and your Halloween Havoc host, Shotzi Blackheart. Comes with WWE Authentication Hologram on the back. You'll also receive an on-air thank you from WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas and a bonus mystery autograph photo. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome collective. Ah, uh, see ya. Why, hello. I would ask what was on your mind, but I already know. You want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic. And I'll tell you, it's sexy as hell beard care. Coconut oil, vitamin E oil, almond oil, both sweet and bitter, shea butter, it's all natural. Yes, JTG has actually come out with a high quality product. So support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy as hell. <laughs> Cheer. <laughs> Ooh, cheer. <laughs> you know? <laughs> 
All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Insiders Current Events. We broke down NXT from last night in Orlando. Now we head a little bit north up to Ursula Daly's place, Jacksonville, Florida, for a little AEW Dynamite. Mr. David Carter, I pass the baton to you. Let's take a look at what AEW had for us last night. Well, AEW had for us was the only was the main event in the beginning of the show, which I was happy with because the rest of the show for me went downhill. But we kicked it off with Christian Cage versus uh, Kazarian. Um, Christian physically looked great. I think he was in some of the best shape I've ever seen him in his career. Um, it was a slow match to start, though, which I figured because it's his first match back. Um, Christian took a hell of a bump off the top rope onto the floor. Did you see that yeah. when he pushed it? Literally went right off to his side, on flat on his back. I was surprised he would take a bump like that. Um, but there was no real high flying in this match, which I kind of like. Just holds and punches, a lot of near falls. Uh, Christian Cage ended up getting the win in this match, but I was kind of surprised because his gimmick's supposed to be outwork everyone, but it seemed like Kazarian almost outworked him the whole match, other than the ending. Well, uh, you know, I I hate to criticize it because I'm a big fan of both guys, but I just I thought it was way too long. Right? I was bored with it. Yeah, I thought, and I just was blown away that because his gimmick is outwork. I just I don't know. Maybe it was me. But, no, it wasn't. Yeah. It was I didn't really care for it much either. Okay, good. Um, from there, we get a Darby Allen video package with Sting about Matt Hardy. Um, I didn't really understand it. I don't know if you did. Well, it, it was to me, it was either a little bit like Batman and Robin, or it almost looked like Sting was taking out one of his kids trick or treating. But, you know, I right. guess I they, they're after the Mad Hardy faction. Big money better be on the lookout because Sting and Dobby have got their eyes on them. I'm glad you kind of made a little bit out of it. Cause I couldn't. Well, that's about all it. I got. That's about it. Yeah, I didn't really get it. Uh, from there, we got a Jade Cargill video package. She's beautiful, so I'll look yeah. at any. Oh, I know you were excited about that. It was like the Easter Bunny came early. We know how much you yes, love your sir. chocolate, feminine yes, chocolate. And when you saw that I on your it. screen, brother, you were just yes, waiting sir. to see what was at the bottom of the basket, I guess. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, <laughs> so from there we get uh, Cody Rhodes versus uh, Cutie Marshall. Oh. Aaron Anderson is the guest referee, which uh, it was a back-and-forth match. Surprising it went so long is what I put, because I thought it was going to be quicker than it was. It went a little bit there. Um, anything Cody would put on uh, Cutie, he wouldn't end up doing it. He would, like, get him in, like, the crossroads, all these different things, but wouldn't do it. It's like he's trying to, you know, basically feel bad for him or whatever the case may be. Cutie hits Arn, it knocks Arn, knocks him out, which, shit, he took a punch. That was pretty good, right? Took a bump, yeah. Uh, so there you go. He knocks him out. Then the family starts brawling between all of them. I don't know who's in the family. Who's not in the family. Yeah, was exactly. A, exactly. It was such a big mess. Um, and then Arn took That's another bump. That's what you bump. can describe the whole show as. Yeah. And Arn ended up uh, taking another bump because uh, QD smashed his arm off the barricade. And Arn took freaking another bump off to the um, floor. Uh, Dustin Rhodes is gushing blood from the head. I like QD that. Yeah, that was good. QT Pyro, I, I hate saying his name. QT Pyro drives Dustin Rhodes onto the stairs. Cody gets uh, punched in the stomach. They set Cody up in the head for the stairs, but then Red Belfick comes out and pleads with um, them to stop. Please don't do it. And then they go off the air on commercial break. Uh, just a mess. I didn't like anything about it. Just I think awful. It just, again, yeah, we have a guy that's not over that no one cares about. Now creating another, yet another heel faction with a bunch of guys that no one knows and nobody cares about. What what a great, exciting segment that was. I was waiting, honestly, for them to say some him get on my, like, welcome to my squad, you know, or so whatever the hell his squad, doing, like another faction. Didn't even know I, how to work the hard camera as they were doing this. So all we really I, saw was their asses. Right? And I feel like sometimes they get in these matches and, the guys are like, man, this is a bad idea. Why are we doing this? And well, then they hopefully just go anyone with a brain that was involved in that match that watched it, whether they wanted to go along with the creative or not, at least thought what you just said. I mean, it just seems I, uh, I don't know. Uh, from there, we're backstage with uh, Ethan Page and Scorpion, Scorpio Sky. It's a video package. They take they're going to take everything they want. And it starts Monday. Um, 
if they're teaming up, I think that's really good because they're both very talented as we went over. I'm, I love Scorpio Sky. I think you said you're a real big fan of him, too. I've seen, watched Ethan Page and Impact for weeks. I think he's fantastic. Um, I think this could be a really good tag team. Well, I like the promo an awful lot. I'm not all that familiar with the page, but uh, I think to keep Scorpio Sky away from the SCU nonsense is a great thing for him. I think that'll only help him. And, you know, maybe they'll put together another solid tag team if they don't want to go the singles route with them. Right on. Um, from there, another uh, we're backstage, and Jade Cargill attacks Red Velvet. There you go. Your, uh, your moment of the night. Well, I love Jade. I think she's beautiful. And then Jade ends up, after attacking her, goes, says she's that bitch i don't know it's this common trend with these girls going back and forth saying that whatever um you love your there. chocolate yes you had plenty of it last night yes sir uh from there earlier on the day they filmed moxley with a little interview he says the snap from kingston ankles he just can't get from his head he's pissed off about everything he names different things and just goes off um Waste the promo with Moxley. I don't care about it. Didn't make me think anything. I don't know. He's he much was about he's, as angry as I was having to sit through four hours of these shows. That was and it's just, that bad last night. And I like we talked about Moxley's been doing some great stuff, and this yeah. is just not his strong right here. This kind of stuff. He needs to get away from the Kingston stuff, the Good Brothers, all that shit. He needs a new feud, a new scent on him, or whatever you want to say, because this is no good anymore. From there, we get the match. John Moxley versus Cesar Bononi. Uh, back and forth match. Um, it was good. John Moxley went with the sleeper hold, which I was surprised. Old school. Ne never really see that. But what I want to say is Caesar, I think because he went back and forth, maybe they see something in him because he's a big dude. Um, I haven't really seen him cut a promo, but he has potential. Yeah. No? Yeah. Mm, Nothing right. exceptional as of yet that struck my eye, but I've only seen him... A few times, to be fair. All right. Um, from there, we're backstage or filmed earlier, but it looks like it's backstage. Everything is great for Team Taz. That's what T Taz says. Uh, Ricky Stocks and Cage complain about who should have tagged each other during the match last week. Uh, Taz cuts him off and says, everything's good with Team Taz. So, quick little thing. Which, well, they were referring to something that happened on the Internet show. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, see, I the thing watch. is, maybe they should have showed a clip so people would have had some idea about what the fuck they were talking about. Right, because I didn't know either, but I knew it was from last week because that's all I caught. So I'm guessing they fact. lost, but I have yeah. no idea who they lost to or how or why. Right on, and I just, there's too much AEW shows on the internet that I yeah. can watch. I'm not watching. Yeah, no, I'm all set. Um, but the thing is, what kills me is Taz is one of the best things that AEW has, and he's not even on the show. I don't well, get it. Or moderation, if nothing else. Right, but I don't know. Okay, maybe you're right, but then, well, at least, at least we didn't get Sting this week, right? On, with Tony Schiavone. Well, you did, but at least you didn't have, I'm surprised Tony Schiavone wasn't on the bridge introducing them. Well, that's what I'm saying. He wasn't on the, you know, the ramp or whatever. Um, then we're backstage. The pinnacle is in the locker room. MJF has a designer and then an interior decorator he said they need to have. Um, all of a sudden, MJF... Uh, you know, is looking around, ready to open the door and say, let's go over there. And you see the inner circle. They shut the door and they open up the other door and there's Jack, uh, Jake Hager. Wow. I thought this was really cool. I, this part I didn't mind. Um, they end up starting brawling all over the place, all over the backstage, throughout different parts of the arena. Then the Dax is gushing blood from his head. That was a great visual. I liked that a lot. MJF and Jericho finish it off. They're in the bathroom. Jericho's giving MJF swirlies in the toilet bowl. Um, I thought it was pretty good. I, I mean, if this is going to lead to something, this was good. This part, I didn't mind. What did you think of it? Best part of the show, without a shadow of a doubt. No, it was a pretty good uh, revenge for the inner circle. Um, a little little bit all over the place where they all wound up in different parts of the building. But, you know, it... it what I liked about it was I didn't expect in a circle there when you opened the door. I just thought they were going to go out to the ring. You thought they were going to go to the men's room. Well, yeah, there you go. Whatever. But you know what I'm saying? I didn't. I Unless didn't the entryway it, to the arena is through the men's room. Right. But that's the thing is what I didn't understand. Where the frig were they? Because they were like in a locker room, it looked like. Isn't the restroom in the locker room? 
Uh, they, it's their own private dressing room, so they have their own private bathroom. Oh, well, big time, huh? I guess so. Well, I'm glad you caught that. Uh, from there, we uh, we get another inter- uh, interview slash backstage promo, whatever you want to call it. Don Cows confronts Matt Jackson. Don tells Matt they they broke uh, Kenny Omega's heart last week. Your choice from last week was wrong, Don Cow says. What is wrong with you? Don backhands uh, Matt across the face. Matt grabs Don and then then lets go. He doesn't do anything. Don says, you're truly pathetic, and this is exactly why. I like I like Don a lot, and I, I mean, they're trying to prove build up Matt Jackson as some tough guy, I guess, but he's really not, so I don't know. To me, it is what it is. What did you think of this? I thought Don Callis was effective, as he usually is verbally. Uh, the Young Bucks right is, is tough guys. It's just it's like with Adam Cole on NXT. I just don't buy it. They yeah, should push they, their athleticism instead of their, uh, you know, badassness. There you go. Um, from there, we get Good Brothers and Kenny Omega versus Penta, Ray, and Laredo Kid. Fine match. We've seen it a few times, done a few different ways. Um, I put the Luchadors of the Great High Flyers. Um, some really crazy moves during the match. No one really sells, obviously. Uh, Omega wins by pinfall. Moxley comes out and starts looking at them, you know, walking back and forth like he does all that crazy stuff. Then the Bucks come out for us to uh, side by side with them. They get in the ring. Omega and the brothers run out of the ring. So basically, we're building to, I guess, another match of that. Probably going to get it next week, maybe, or the week after, but that's what they're building to. What did you think of it? Wasn't a bad match, you know. No. That's it was a right. lot worse on this show. Oh, that's for sure. And I'm sure that helped in my critique of it. I mean, it, it, it was good. I was trying to think. I think they, honestly, I was trying to think if they had any singles matches other than the QT Marshall and Cody Rhodes match. Everything else was tag teams, I think, this week. There were a lot of tag team wrestling, yeah. I, I was just thinking, because then we get Dr. Britt Baker and Rebel oh. promoting... Elevation on Monday night, reading all different things, being funny, uh, making fun of Thunder Rosa, but nothing really writing home about it. Um, then we get Tay Conti and Hiroko Shiata. Sh- sh- how do you say her last name? Shia- sh- I think it's Shida. Shida? Okay, Hiroko Shida. Sorry. Chinese, a little not good for me. I believe it's uh, Japanese, but close enough. All right, there you go. Versus Nyla Rose and the Bunny. Um, I don't know. Very long match for me. Yes. Um, every woman's match is long there, so it's just expected now. Nyla and the Bunny win by pinfall. Matt Hardy celebrating at the end. Uh, I don't know. Nothing really. Right. I'm not a big fan of the of the AEW's women's wrestling at all. I do like Tay Conti. I think she's very good to look at, at least. But other than that, I'm not a big fan. It of was it. just it turned into a human sea of garbage with all the bodies involved. Yeah. It's the only way I can, I mean, just horrible, horrible. Like you always say, man, horrible. Like overbook everything. Horrible. Yep. Um, from there, we had uh, Jurassic, Jurassic Express issuing a challenge to their country next week. Because obviously we didn't see it, like you were talking about the internet show. Yeah. A cl- you know, a 30-second clip might have helped, but. Yeah. So I just know because of what they what they went by. So next week we're going to see Jurassic Express versus uh, their country. From there, we get the match that you were looking for. The what was it? The video game and Arky thing they did. Um, video games are surrounding the ring. Myro versus Inkip versus Chucky e. T and uh, Orange Cassidy. Um, they were slamming each other into the games. Myro sh- uh, should be wiping the floor with Cassidy. I put, but no, Cassidy was like doing some moves to him, and I'm like, what is going on? Ugh, I don't know. Big mess. Um, they use a bag of Legos in the match. Chucky e. T opens it up, throws it in the ring. <laughs> I don't know Statlander, um, and uh, that's the that? Martian, right? Yeah, yeah. That if, was that Penelope one. Ford? What's that now? Who was the other girl, Penelope Ford? Yeah. All right, I just wanted to make that's sure. the it wife, like, that's the spouse. Yeah, but it didn't look like her oh. that for some reason to me. She looked different last night, so I'm like, that's got to be her though. Um, and they go through the hockey table, which was kind of a cool spot. You know, the air hockey table that was cool. Uh, Trent shows up in a minivan with his mom. He, 
I can't believe I just said that with this bomb. Oh, uh, uh, he joins in the brawl. Ch- uh, Chuck Taylor and Cassidy win the match at the end, which is probably going to build to another one of these matches because obviously, I don't know. And you know, they exposed it when he threw the video game, and it, you, you could tell that it was built by hand. It was all wood, and there was no electricity going into the damn thing. My favorite spot uh, was at the end when you seen the mother just tearing out the window with yeah. her hand. Now, I see, if like, I booked it, I would have had not Miro not only kick the fuck out of the three of them, but I would have had him pull the mother out of the minivan and put her in the camel clutch on the hood of the minivan to try and get yeah. him over as a heel. Right on. Or did something. Something. I don't know. I I, I was not. Instead, this was had... an embarrassment. It was atrocious. Yeah, it was this show. Like I said, there was one good thing I absolutely liked on this show, and it was the very first. That it match. ended it really, and I didn't even really care about the, that match because it's just too long, and it, you know what I mean. But if I had to pick, was one thing that I looked forward to, and at least that was that. I gave this show a three out of ten. Well, I even went lower than you. I gave it a two out of ten. It was just worth <laughs> wasted time. It was terrible. It made NXT look good, and that sucked too. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I was not happy with it, and I got there's nothing I've seen for news and notes on AEW this week, so I got nothing on them. Well, that's one way to put it after the ending of that show, but that's a different story for a different time. Well. Uh, At least things are interesting on our end here in the world of Boston Wrestling MWF. Don't forget, we have Marty Jannetty, 10 p.m. tonight, in a blockbuster episode that's so exciting, I forgot what it's all about. Uh, John Cena Sr. will be with us again tomorrow night at 10 o'clock as the lights at the Thunderdome go down. Majo Ouellette of Ms. and Mrs. Fame is going to feel all warm and fuzzy seeing Johnny, maybe wanting to see what that fuzz on the top of his head is all about. Uh, We'll be back with Wrestling Inside as we can review for the first time five episodes in one. One supersized episode with five shoots. That's a pretty cool late night episode. And then we culminate the week, Easter Sunday, after you have a little chocolate waiting for you Easter morning. I don't know whether the Easter Bunny is going to bring it or not, but uh, Easter night, 8 p.m., we're going to have a retro watch along as we relive WrestleMania 1. Yep, I can. I, I I think that'll be really fun. It's something that you guys can watch after you're done eating, as Dan say, your chocolate or your meal or whatever you're going to have, your ham. Well, I know I'll be um, having a meal, but I don't know if I'll be having any chocolate for Easter. Oh, I, you know, I, I, I have, never have, never have. Maybe a little white chocolate. But. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, it's going to be great. I spending some Thanksgiving with you. I mean, Thanksgiving, Easter with you. You're you really jumping the gun. <laughs> Sorry, just a little excited. Um, yeah, spending Easter with you guys for WrestleMania 1. I think that'll be fun. I think you guys really enjoy the watch along. All right, wrestling fans, for Dave Cotter, I'm Dan Marotti. Continue to follow us on social media and over on bostonwrestling.com. We, we should be having big Wrestle House updates ASAP. I cannot officially say what they are yet because it's not 100% official, but it, it looks like we could have at least eight superstars joining us in total. We are in for a hell of a week in Tampa. We may never recover. <laughs> Absolutely. Much like at 10 o'clock when I'm joined by Marty Gennetti as we continue his uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll fueled look at the world of professional wrestling through his crazy eyes. For Dave Carter, I'm Dan Marotti, folks. Have a little break. Get a snack. Get a cold beverage. We'll see you back here on YouTube at 10 p.m. with Marty Gennetti. You and yours be well. Good night. The World Wrestling Federation was live at Oberhausen Arena in Oberhausen, Germany, Thursday, April the 1st, 1999, birthday of multi-time WWE World Champion Randy Orton. The opening contest, WWF Tag Team Champion X-Pac beat the Brooklyn Brawler. Val Venus and Jackie with the win over D'Lo Brown and Ivory. Triple H defeated WWF Tag Team Champion Kane. WWF Intercontinental Champion Goldust retained the title over Road Dogg. WWF Hardcore Champion Hardcore Holly retained the title over Al Snow. The Undertaker victorious over Ken Shamrock. Billy Gunn beat Gangrel. Edge and Christian with the win over Owen Hart and Jeff Jarrett. 
The Big Show defeated the Big Boss Man, and in the main event, WWF World Champion Stone Cold Steve Austin retained the title over The Rock. If you were in Oberhausen Live, share your memories in the comment section below. Use the links in the description box to keep wrestling legends working in our eBay store and on our world-renowned Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. Boston Wrestling Sports in the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Inside Us at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Insider Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay per view watch alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times join our growing family at patreon.com backslash boston wrestling expect the unexpected in 2021 wrestling fans i'm dan marotti and this is the man of the hour leo rush it was all over bostonwrestling.com and our social media but leo brother they got to check out some of this merch they got to check it out fans right now available on ebay Support Wrestling Insiders and keep wrestling legends working on eBay. Get this Carrion Cross and Scarlet double autographed 11 by 14 poster from NXT TakeOver in your house, number 19 of only 30 made. Comes with authentication hologram on the poster itself. Also comes with a mystery autographed 8 by 10 photo and an on-air shout out from WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA Tony Atlas on Wrestling Insiders at your house. Get it now.